Spider webs is about the only thing in hail. Uh, I've definitely made some hail contact. I came out of a cloud one time covered in snow and I opened up my parachute and I had about like three inches of snow on me and I made a giant snowball with it. Flew over to my buddy Charles and I threw it at him and I missed him by like 300 feet. He wakes up and every day is, what can I do to make today awesome? I was born at a very young age, and I, uh, when I grew up, my dad was in the Air Force, and we traveled around a lot, and spent um, about three years here, three years there, from Omaha, Nebraska, uh, Castle Air Force Base, California. We moved over to Okinawa, Japan. I was in four different schools in fourth grade, so I traveled around quite a lot. I don't know, it's an adventure. And I always wanted to be a stuntman as I was a kid. Um, took judo, learned how to fall, went to the swimming pool, learned how to dive into water and how to do flips and tricks in the sky. Used to watch this TV show called Ultraman Ace. Uturuman Aceu! And that was a, uh, that's a uh, Japanese cartoon. And um, it's really awesome. I used to watch Ultraman Ace do this flip with a half twist, like a branny, over Godzilla and then doosh, shock him with a laser. But, uh, that trick I took to the diving boards when I was a kid and I would just do that move over and over and over off the diving board until I mastered it and then uh, then I watched some other divers going off and um, yeah, started started doing tricks in the pools mostly to get started and then uh, yeah, that was a good one, right? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot what the question was. <laughs> where, where was I going with that? <laughs> yeah. So Miles and I met in Squaw Valley, California I had just graduated from graduate school. I was 23, 24, 
23, 24. And um, I had wanted to just ski for a little bit and snowboard. And so I moved into a house and they told me, well, we have a house guest. And that was Miles. He was sleeping on the couch in between. Um, he would skydive during the summer. And then in the winter, he would go up to um, Points North, which is in Alaska, and work for a heli ski company. And he had about two months where he wasn't doing one of those. So he just was sleeping on the couch and then kind of skiing. So my first impression was this guy was crazy. just live such a different life. I had gone to school right through, I had my master's degree, I was ready to start my career, and he was all about fun and um, living every day to the fullest, and it just really kind of blew my mind. And uh, yeah, we ended up dating, and here we are. did want to be a Hollywood stuntman and that was kind of one of my one of my goals and then after college um, I went to school to be a PE teacher and I ended up going to Tahoe and taking a bunch of odd jobs to ski at Squaw Valley and uh, just spent some time um, learning how to, to ride powder and that kind of stuff and uh, got sidetracked and started skydiving but um, after being in the sport of skydiving for about oh gosh 14 years um, we're on the Red Bull Air Force, um, kind of made it to the, to the top demonstration skydiving team on the planet as far as I'm concerned. And uh, it's, it's really awesome to be uh, on this team. And we put together some stunts for Iron Man 3. So that, that dream of being a stuntman, Hollywood stuntman, was actual reality. We weren't in Hollywood. We did all the shooting on the East Coast in uh, North Carolina. But uh, yeah, we uh, definitely were in Iron Man 3. And uh, Major Duxley reporting for duty. It was a really sweet, um, sweet job fulfilling that goal in life right there. You know, it'd be cool to do some more, but uh, I'm pretty happy with what we did. It was really awesome. Dream came true. breakfast um, I like to you know after getting the kids to school go do some exercise pack parachutes I like to do like three a day kind of like as a normal day for me
I love to, to go do jumps with the Rebel Air Force and train in the military and all kinds of good, fun stuff like that for jobs. And um, yeah, love just playing with parachutes as much as I can. <laughs> Just kind of hang out, have some fun time, family time, go to bed, and wake up, do it all over again. jump up on this rail and send it. I was actually 25 years old when I started, so. <laughs> but before that, you know, I was always trying to jump off of um, cliffs into water. And um, I used to jump off roofs of houses and that kind of thing. And I always like just to kind of fly my body. So fear definitely helps you and guides you. But um, if you can't control your fear, then you shouldn't really be doing action adventure sports because you got to be able to maintain your composure the whole time and not let fear take over. But definitely um, don't be afraid and complacent of what you're doing, but um, use your fear to help guide you. Yeah, scariest memories base jumping. Uh, well, I was flying a wingsuit and um, actually I had a couple of scary moments, but uh, one of them was flying a wingsuit and getting really close to the ground and, and not being sure that I'm going to make that, that next hump. So I had to aim at it and get speed and I wasn't sure I was gonna make it. And I was just picturing my daughter, Dorothy, in my head and I was like, you gotta make this. And I knew that if I wasn't gonna get enough speed and start to make it to pull before you hit that spot, but I didn't wanna land way up on that mountain and have to hike out all night and um, cleared it. And uh, the other time I opened up a parachute, went into a tree at Bridge Day after rope swinging off of Shane McConkey under his parachute, we just, same time. I was thinking again of Dorothy as I was going into this tree, just opening a canopy. And I was also thinking of kind of uh, Rambo, when Rambo went through the tree and uh, he just tucked it up and went yeah, like that. I did one of those, just tucked it up and went yeah. And it kind of reminded me of uh, when I learned judo, giving a key eye and feeling your chi and going full power into that thing. And that's what I did, I was like full power. Yeah. And um, yeah, just kind of remember your training and do what you need to do <laughs> at the time. you know get hung up in a 100 foot tree, it was awesome. So one time he was on a, I think it was a helico helicopter airplane and his like wingsuit got caught and he was like hanging off of it. And yeah, he had to like cut away or something like that. Yeah, I mean, when a life on the edge, um, being the crazy base jumper, I mean, yeah, what we do is construed as crazy, but um, there's actually a madness to this method. And it's, we didn't just go out there and just kind of launch ourselves into the abyss blindly. We kind of built ourselves up, like doing this skill, doing that skill, doing this skill, and, and, and try to get to a certain level where we want it to be. And then as we attain that level, there was another level to be at. And so we just kept going until we got to that level. And then becoming married is just like a normal, um, part of life. I'm still doing the same things, you know, and it's not like I was that crazy back then I was more meticulous, but we would have like cool crazy ideas and I mean we just came up with a couple cool new things that we're gonna see this winter getting the speed riding and I've been doing that forever but a uh, paramotor flying where you got a, a backpack fan and you can just take off straight off um, off a of straight ground here we've got the Snake River Canyon. I can just jam on over to the bridge, go base jump and ride a mountain bike over, jump, 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 come back home. Um, but it's really neat to be able to just fly out of your backyard off flat ground, just run a canopy up over your head, just take off and go. So yeah, I think i uh, got many, many more years with this new sport of paramotoring. It's pretty awesome. We are different in that he is all about fun. I'd say is A number one, what's gonna be fun and what's gonna be adventurous. Favorite memories of skydiving and base jumping, that'd probably be my first jump. You know, getting out in that feeling of like, I'm laying down on the air now and there's nothing, I'm not touching the earth. It was when I was first flying and that was a pretty overwhelming experience, you know. And, 
I've always dreamt about it when I was a kid, and I've done a bunch of bungee jumping before I started skydiving, and uh, and it's always a good like stepping off the earth and going zero gravity for a while. And skydiving really wasn't that because you're you're getting blasted by a 120 mile an hour wind when you step off the aircraft, but it was still it was just super overwhelming um, experience. My best base jump though would probably be either the, the latest, the Petra Jordan one, which was super technical, because I've been kind of like nerding out on my canopy skills and like trying to like hone them in, dial them in. And uh, that was the place to kind of show canopy skills. But uh, before I was a base jumper, my roommate, Frank Kimbali, he had um, jumped off this cliff in Norway called the Troll Wall, the Great Troll Wall. And he was flying his body for 26 seconds before he pulled and opened his parachute. And that's jumping off a cliff, which was a world record at the time in a 26 second free fall delay. And when I saw that video of him jumping off a cliff and left off the earth and then just flying just his body for 26 seconds before he opened his parachute to go land, that grabbed me and uh, actually had that jump happen. Jumped off the troll wall with Shane McCocky, with wingsuits. It was about a four hour hike to get to the top of the thing. You gotta climb, you have to take your gear off and climb through a hole in a rock. And then you're on this ledge and then you put your gear back on and then you get out to the exit point and you jump off and, and just free fall for over a minute. Like I think it was about almost two minutes of free fall with the wingsuit. And I think that was like one of the best base jumps, if not the best base jumps of my life off the great troll wall. Like there's plenty of things like one of the big things that I've been talking about lately and this guy just kind of, it really touched my soul really well um, at this air show we were just at down in Nellis. This guy's like, Miles Dasher, comes and give me a big hug over the, um, like we're like high-fiving kids down the line as after we did our skydive. And this guy, um, he really made me feel good. He said something that I told, uh, talked about on a video changed his life for the better. And it's something that changed my life. And it's it's words from Frank and Bali, who didn't only teach me how to base jump and skydive, but he, he had a lot of uh, big life quotes that really help you out and the one that i'd like to pass along is um he asked me if i love what i do and i go love is a very strong word you know if you love what you do he goes if you don't love what you do 100 percent, then quit doing it and start doing what you love because what you're doing now is your career and that's going to take you through the rest of your life so you better love it and have fun with it and uh and then he died like six months um later and then those words really hit home to me and I kind of quit the job that I was doing at the time, which was a good means to an end for buying gear and doing things that I loved. But then I basically went all in on the sport of base jumping and skydiving, and um, that changed my life. So do what you love because that's what you're gonna do for your life. This is your life, this is your one ticket um, on the planet right now, so enjoy it. And it could be heaven, it could be hell, it is what you make it. You know, some people are happy being miserable. I love having fun and hanging out with having people and high-fiving and laughing and smiling and telling cool stories. So that's what I choose to do in life and that's that's what I'm gonna keep on doing because it's so much fun and my goal in life is to be super old, sitting in a rocking chair telling stories that no one will believe until we pull out a VHS and show you how we do it. <laughs> I got a couple of VHSs still, it's crazy, huh? I need to convert those before they don't can't show them anymore, but yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's my goal in life is to have cool life experiences. And I think that's the biggest thing you can do is not accrue wealth through money, but through cool life experiences and um, happy times with friends on this planet. He is really an, an inspiration, I think, to myself, to the kids. Um, and that's really neat to have. He is somebody who followed his dreams and has been able to make a life for us, and that's really amazing. So, you know, especially if I'm thinking about young adults choosing what to do in life, follow your dreams. Make it happen, because if you really love it, then you don't ever go to work. You're, you're just doing what you love, and if you can get paid for that, you're gonna live a really good life.